Hey, welcome to What the Flick. We're back, finally. Sorry, it's uh, just me and Alonzo, so when we travel, it's... I know. The scheduling's been a nightmare, and it's been a great season. It's not like we yeah, haven't we love been it. loving it. And we we're just... catching up on Fargo. We're just going to do the last episode. Yeah, the, the castle, because there's just a bit... Uh, we'd, we'd be here all day. But so... we will talk about some of the other things if they sure. come up. So, um, so it's, that, it's the next to last episode, right. so of course... Things are happening, and you know, like the, all the every, all the dominoes are being lined up for for how this is all going to wind up. I really like that their ability to handle the way other shows don't luck, randomness. Like, randomness, yeah. yeah, they're really good at randomness, and and so you know, uh, Patrick Wilson has that great line to Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst, mm -hmm. you know, of I don't think it was in the, I don't know what episode it was in. I saw four <laughs> in a row to catch up. But he says, like in the cabin there, you know, he's like, no, you've been incredibly lucky. Yes. This is a terrible, terrible <laughs> plan. It will run up. You're going up right. against killers, and you're a butcher, and you're yeah. a beautician, and they're going to kill you. But they were lucky again yes, in this episode. always. By the way, was that Martin Freeman narrating this yes. episode? Yeah, I Martin thought Freeman. so. Yeah. Okay, nice. So joke. totally Good different part. start to the show. Different, you know, different look, different yeah. feel with turning it into a story. Mm. Uh, which I thought was interesting. What did you think of that sort no, of storybook? No, I, story I, I mean, because well, they, they, they always do that whole, you know, the following is a true right. story. So this was just sort of an extension of that. Uh, so, yeah, no, I thought I, it, it was not too cutesy. It was yeah. a gamble that worked, I think. I like it. Then the other, the, obviously, that that was the second biggest gamble they took in the show. <laughs> the, the biggest gamble was uh, they dropped hints, starting with the first episode and why Rye was killed. Oh, right, Rye's yes. Uh, so it wasn't out of nowhere, but still... Anytime a fucking a, UFO. Anytime an actual <laughs> flying saucer shows up, especially in the middle of a gunfight, changing its outcome. Yes. Um, in North Dakota. It's worth noting. Uh, your what did you, what was your initial reaction, and then and then maybe you're you're giving it some time reaction. Uh, you know, I mean, I we we've been waiting for it. You're, yeah. They they they've been telegraphing this pretty much from the get go, and even on this episode, like I remember taking note of the you know we are not alone bumper sticker mm -hmm. that was above where the mm -hmm. the shopkeeper okay. had his keys. Oh right, yeah right. So I'm like, okay, the, you know, at some point, like we're running out of show. At some point, this UFO thing's got to deliver, and then it happened. I was like, oh, okay, so they're gonna be literal about this. Um, I'm still. I'm gonna have to. I, I, I'm gonna withhold judgment until I see the finale. I think that's really gonna. I see think that's fair, but I, I think together. because they did set it up, you know, and it's gonna be unexplained. They mm -hmm. always are, <laughs> right? I mean, they don't sure. have to explain it. It's always unexplained. There you go. Um, uh, and and saved, I think, in large part or enhanced in large part by Ed and what's what's Kirsten Dunst's name in the show? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Ed and Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst's reaction to it. Yeah. Because they're getting shot at, right? <laughs> I mean, the... the, the um, Ambush. <laughs> right. Hansy is... is you know, or the most lethal killer in Fargo history yes. is on their he's, is on their tail. He's sent the he's right entire there. family, and he's shooting the, everybody. He's shooting yeah. cops. He's shooting uh, Gundersons, not Gundersons. No, and, um, uh, Gerhards. Yes, he's shooting Gerhards, and now he's going after he them. Stabbed Floyd, and he stabbed Floyd, he stabbed Floyd after that look where they have a moment of mm. like, you know, and and it's unclear why he would want to kill uh, Plemons and Dunst. So badly. Well, they talk about that in the narration. That they were the only they they, they if, if only to clean up after the fact that they were the only ones who saw him kill Dodd. But I mean, he's. I mean, they got him now. I mean, he's no one. He's wanted for murder. He killed the South Dakota cop. I mean, he doesn't need to clean up one murder. He's going to death row. Uh, you know, maybe he I, just. I, I read, and I think this is interesting that that they are the only people who. Saw him oh, for who he is. That, well, they say that in the narration too. Yeah. That they that he trusted them. That he said that he wanted to get out of this life, get a and, haircut, like he wanted to be different, and yes. that, that exposed him. And he, he yeah, handled that it. was so, yeah. The, the the show goes into all that. Um, um, I, you know, it's interesting. The the I think Hansy and Milligan in the world of this show because. It's so white. Mm -hmm. I mean, like America, you know, there there are some pockets of just like whitey white whiteness, mm -hmm. and the you know this is Garrison Keillor country mm -hmm. here, right, right, right? And so you have these characters who are who are people of color, who are in these criminal organizations, and they're very good at what they do, but they're always going to be limited as far as like how high they get to climb that ladder because of the fact that they're yes. not white. They're sort of like the Tom Haydens, you know, where. You know, because he wasn't an actual Corleone, because he was adopted, he was never gonna, you know, right, rise right, right. to the very top. And these guys have the burden of not 
but, being, you know, Midwestern. Right, but the difference between Tom Hayden and them is you're right. They have limits to how high they can go. But they also, even though they are by far the best people in their organization. what they do, yeah. They're, they still not even, it's not so much that they won't get promoted. They're, they're still going to have to, to suffer slurs, from the ridicule yeah. and the slurs. I mean, that, that Dodd could say those things to Hansi like, hey, man, who else is looking for you? Yeah. Right? Who else is coming to your rescue? Who else has executed your dumb orders <laughs> without asking <laughs> the letter, questions? Yeah. And then for Milligan to take that abuse on, who was that actor who played? Uh, 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 Brad Garrett. Right. No, no, no. But he, oh, oh. the guy from the business who calls him. And oh, then, right, so, right. Yeah, that know, guy. The, mm -hmm. Bulo said you were one of the good darkies. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, uh, so for him to have to deal with that, like, you know, and then they send the cleaner or whatever it is. And then he's like, that we were just talking. That. <laughs> I loved that scene where they send the guys to kill Milligan and take over because from a, from a show point of view, they, they had him in the elevator. He's got his two uh, Asian henchmen who seem like they're going to be kung fu -y and Yeah, you know, or just as characters that are about to matter, so we're giving right, you a good, big right, look at Right, here's them, giving you know. us a big entrance of characters about to matter, and 15 seconds later, <clears throat> phew, gurgling blood on the floor, yeah. and that's the end of that. Uh, and you see that Milligan's loyalty, like Milligan treat is the only person on the show other than the good cops who treat his who treats his underling with respect. That's like, true. He's yeah. like... You know, thanks, man. I know that was hard on you too. Like he's he's actually looking out for him, which uh, so the, this the surviving so, so, kitchen brother. So the the big motel shootout now with the Gerhards obviously is going to be key in the in the family lives of the cops of Fargo of both seasons because you have Molly's mom collapsing in the kitchen while you know dad is trying to stop this shootout and grandpa gets one in the gut. Gets one in the gut and, and is talking like a guy who won't survive when you yeah. say I'll see you for dinner Sunday night. That's right. usually, and he was shot in the gut with a, you know, M16, mm -hmm. or a, a military weapon, uh, which of course we have all the time now. In this country. Mm -hmm. You can just go buy one. Um, uh, that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yes, but the oh, but back to real quick the UFO. That great moment of Jesse Plemons as they're running for <laughs> their lives, and he's like, "Are you seeing this?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's just a UFO. It's we a flying go. saucer. We gotta <laughs> go. It's a flying saucer. We gotta go. That's just it's everything you need to know about how the, these people should not be together." No, I well, mean, I, I mean, I hope they, I hope it works out, but they, they need to, yeah, they need her, to go a different path. Her, her seventies s jargon. That's been yeah. kind of a fun through line of a lot of these shows. Like the, the Americans had that whole yes, S totally, yes, right, right, right. The, you know, the, 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 the sort of yeah, nutty. FX loves, loves yeah, seventies gurus stuff. apparently. Um, yeah. But he, you know, and, and yes, yeah, she is by far the crazier one, and he's the one you have much more sympathy for. But the flip side is, like, he's not hearing her at all, where he could say. Yeah, you know what? Let's sell the house I grew up in, and we'll we'll buy our own house somewhere. I, like she's prepared to give him a kid and a family, but hey, maybe we move to St. Paul. Sure, you know, and have yeah. a normal there's life a in a city with right. There's a compromise there. You don't have to be a butcher here in this town in this house with the sunken living room where you grow up. Yeah, I mean, and his, I mean, it's not like his dreams don't make sense. It's like you know, he's been the assistant yeah, butcher. Right, he sure. could buy the shop. It's like it all make you know. But yeah, is she's so clearly not down for it, and he's not he's hearing not, it at all. He's not hearing it in any way. Yeah. Um, so. I don't know. It was, you know, it was so great and, and heartbreaking for Hansi because you're you 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 sort of like him, and but yet he's assassinating that store owner. I mean, that store owner. You escaped the the same crazed assassin <sighs> gunman on the loose once. Yes. And then he comes back to get you. Um, that is a that's a tough break. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I think it's it's the the it, race in general in this show has been interesting because when you think about like Key and Peel in season one, mm -hmm. as sort of the FBI agents who get kind of shunted off that's to right. the field office because no one's paying attention to them. You know, it's just it, it, it's interesting how that plays out because we have we 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 think of this geographical area as being so sort of Scandinavian, like yes. not even just sort of you know standard. Right, it's not know. Iowa even. It's it's yeah. it is. It's Finland. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah, and, and you know, and if, 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 if and you feel like if, if Hansi had thrown his support to Floyd in the beginning, mm. then this all would have gone down differently. Very much like so. Like sanity would have prevailed, and a lot of people would be alive. I, and of course, we also had the execution, the Sopranos-like execution of the granddaughter by Bear. Like I oh, right. Oh was, God. I didn't think yeah. He was going to do it, but that was like Adriana. I mean, taking her out to the woods. Yeah, 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 for yeah, her yeah. Life and and. Uh, and but I thought on orders from Floyd, of course, but not no, clearly no, 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 on no. orders from Floyd. Yeah, and, and and well, you know, like like the Sopranos or like to 
call back the Coens, Miller's Crossing. Sure, right. oh, right, 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 yes. Uh, and, and actually there was a scene, the, the first scene between Hansi and the store owner reminded me a lot of Anton Chigurh in yes, No Country for Old Men. Right, you we're, know. We're flipping the coin. Yeah, right, the yeah. friendo right, scene. Right, so, right, right, yeah. Um, yeah, that, you know, I, again, this was a show, I remember when it started thinking like, oh, who needs this? Why is there a TV show of Fargo? And so, boy, howdy, I'm glad and, there is one. And it, this feels like a, you know, I mean, Justified was on FX, and that was, that was Elmore Leonard characters. This this still, this is feels Elmore Leonard inspired. Oh, like, sure, The way yeah. they talk, man, that is. Um, and then, uh, um, shit, was such a lovely point. <laughs> Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but uh, I'm sure it was great. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, just uh, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, again, so yeah, I, whatever season three is, I'm sure it will somehow tie in with the Solversons. They seem to be the the main through line for us here. It's gonna so. come uh, after season one. Season three is gonna come after season one. But before two? No, no, but, no, no, no. Obviously, two is way in the past, so it's gonna be set. Oh, right, time. sorry, yeah, after season, season one, season right, one, yes, yes, But so, still sorry. enough in the past, because they said the stories have to be told in the past. Like, it's not happening sure. now. The things have to be looked right, back right. on. So we probably that means we probably get, you know, Allison Tolman. Older, back. yeah, and Colin Hanks. Uh, and um, yeah, so that, which is, you know, a uh, 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 welcome. Reason to but now, I mean, and, oh, real quick, this is not what I was thinking of, but, you know, we there was the weird UFO symbols or Native American symbols in Ted Danson's house. Oh, I don't know that I caught that. Yeah, when she goes to feed the cat, mm -hmm. when the mom goes to feed the cat, she remember she's in that room and there's oh right 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 that's right, right. Ted, yeah, that's, yeah, her, yeah. that's her dad's house. So the UFO like that's yeah I don't know. Yeah. And and Betty Laplage was brought up again brought up, this week too, who doesn't yeah, exist, but that, the whole fake Ronald Reagan movie. So that's you know we did and we did get Reagan at least on the show. We finally, did get Reagan, it is which a, yeah. which was a cool tie-in. But anyway, uh, so I don't know about how I feel about the UFO thing, but I feel like I fully trust uh, what's his name Noah, Noah Holly, Holly, yeah. Holly to do this uh, right. They've been they've been so good now through 19 episodes. They yes. they, they get a I, I'm anxious to see where they're going. So we promise not to make you wait forever for yeah. the finale. Sorry about that. We'll get caught up on the Nick. We'll get caught up on the home on Homeland. It's it's been a nutty, you know, fall, but we're we, we'll get it together. Thanks you guys for watching.